All right, as we saw over here in this particular lab, that we had the ability to connect R1 and R3 to each other using GRE as a protocol. But well, the problem with that was there was clear text. One of the things that you can do to complement this, because the routing portion was taken care of, they gave, came up and said, well, why don't we encrypt this traffic, any traffic leaving the tunnel, by slapping IPsec on it. So I'll let GRE take care of the routing because if I need a interface with that has this capability, the routing capability, I'll just take care of the encryption part of it. So I have GRE running. On top of that, I'm going to run IPsec. All right. The issue over here is this. I can do that. The issue is that the packet will have three headers. By default. When I set this up, I'll start with a an ICMP header. Let's say I'm doing a ping, which will have 10.1 going to 10.3. All right, that will go through a GRE encapsulation, which will put a GRE header on it. And once I'm done with that, I can then tell IPsec, okay, whatever you get on this interface, on the tunnel interface, take that and encapsulate that, encrypt that. So I'll put a third header on it, <coughs> which is going to be an ESP header. ESP will take the source and destination right off the GRE packet. So you'll have three headers over there. An ESP header, a GRE header, and then the normal data header, which might be ICMP, might be Telnet, might be HTTP, FTP, whatever. Does that make sense? Okay. How do I go about doing that? Let's do this first. But well, remember those five steps for IPsec? Phase one, phase two, I don't need interesting traffic, because GRE will take care of it, so I don't need an ACF, but I need to do something special to allow me to put that encryption on the tunnel. Let's take a look at that. So the steps that I'm going to show you guys over here are the steps required to in integrate, integrate what? GRE with IPsec. How do I do it? <coughs> Step one. The same. Configure ICAMP parameters. Crypto ICAMP policy 10 auth pre share encryption triple des hash MD5 group 2 crypto ICAMP key Cisco address. Address over here will be the public address of the other side, the tunnel destination. In my case, my tunnel destination on R1 will be R3's public address. IPsec will take the tunnel source and tunnel de destination right off the, what? The tunnel source, tunnel destination. When I apply IPsec on the tunnel, it will pick up the source and destination directly from the tunnel source, tunnel destination. Okay, so my de destination is that. Number two, like I did earlier on, configure IPsec parameters. Crypto IPsec, transform set ABC, ESP, triple des, ESP, MD5. Done? Step three, as I told you, is not an ACL. But I need to have a mechanism of applying my encryption to my tunnel interface. The way I do that is I create a profile. Configure an IPsec profile. Hang in with me, I'll show you. And in this profile, I will link up my transform set. Whatever you want to call it. XYZ. Doesn't matter. Set the transform set as ABC. So profile XYZ has what? Linked up to the transform set. ABC. 
The next step was the crypto map, right? I don't create a crypto map instead, apply the encryption to the tunnel interface. Interface tunnel one, tunnel protection, IPsec profile, XYZ. Now, let me ask you this. When I applied my crypto map to my interface, what are the three parameters that I set up in my crypto map? Do you guys remember? Match address. I don't need that because the routing takes care of that. Set peer. I don't need that because the tunnel destination is my peer. Third one, set transform set. What does IPsec profile XYZ contain? So all the three things that I needed for the crypto map to be applied to the interface are already there. The first two were already there. The de tunnel destination is your set peer. Your routing traffic is your interesting traffic. Any traffic going through the tunnel interface. I'm just saying any traffic leaving it should be encrypted using this policy. So any traffic that leaves the tunnel interface will go through IPsec. How many headers though? ICMP, sorry ICMP, ICMP or whatever your internal packet is. It'll put a GRE header on it. 192.1.12.1.23.3 and then an ESP 192.1.12.1 and 23. So you'll have a duplication over there, just like that. Let's take a look. Copy it. Go to router 1. I call it tunnel 1, right? Yeah, tunnel 1, so this should be good. Now what's going to happen, I'm encrypting on one, my, my side, the other one is not. The EIGRP will come down within 15 seconds. It's almost there. There you go. Down. Why? I'm no longer receiving the updates. The ones that I'm receiving are clear text. I cannot accept any clear text. So I need to do the same exact thing where? on the other side, but the only difference is over there, the, the address will be 12.1, this remains the same, this remains the same. Tunnel, I think I call it tunnel three, I'll just verify that. This remains the same. Copy it, go to router three. Yes, tunnel three, paste it. As soon as it comes up, it'll set up the tunnel, because the routing traffic is getting exchanged, the tunnel comes up, my EIGRP comes up. And if you take a look at it, QMIDL, IPsec, 7, 8 packets encrypted. Which packets? I didn't send any ping right now. These are your EIGRP packets, the hello packets that are going through every five seconds. Can I ping? the number has increased because I'm sending the things across. What's the drawback of this? Bigger packet. Now one of the things that you can do to avoid a bigger packet is to move into a mode known as the transport mode. What I showed you right now is a mode known as tunnel mode. The default mode is tunnel. This is tunnel mode. One of the things that you can do is you can go into your IPsec, transform set, and change the mode to transport. Let me explain what that does. Clear crypto essay.
Now, what it does is basically says, let me see if my tunnel, so my outer header and my inner header is the same. Is it? Is my outer header, ESP header, and the GRE header the same? Yes, it is. So what it does, it eliminates in transport mode, what's going to happen is this packet will change to this. You'll have ESP, this thing will go away, it'll still have a GRE header because it's still a GRE packet and it'll jump directly to This is what mode transport does. You can't see it because it's all encrypted, but by changing it to mode transport, I have eliminated the duplication of what? The inside and the outside header. But it's intelligent. Intelligent in the sense of what? It will check and make sure you cannot do mode transport and you are running normal IPsec. If you do that, it says, hey, listen, this is not going to. This is not duplication, so I'm going to, although you say more transport, I'm not going to use more transport. I'm going to use tunnel. Why? They're different. Inside and outside header are different. This guy never sees this. This guy sees inner header as what? This thing. And it sees it, eliminates it. So now, if I take a look at it, I'm changing, I've changed it to what? Transport mode. What does that do? What does that buy me? I'm running GRE and IPsec together. I have eliminated what? The extra duplication of the IP addresses. The IP header is gone. But it's still a, a what? What type of tunnel? It's still a GRE tunnel. So that's why the header is still there. So you have what? ESP, source IP, destination IP, GRE, and the rest. You will not see GRE. Why won't you see GRE? Because this portion is all what? But what transport mode does, it eliminates this guy. These two things over here. That is lab. What's that? The GR, the IP header, 20 bytes per packet. Not that much, but if you have a lot of data going across, it accumulates. Don't look at it from a single packet perspective. Look at it from a larger perspective in terms of how much data is going through the tunnel throughout the day. Now you take 20 bytes and multiply it it can get to a sizable amount. Yeah, because... Second one and the third one. Yeah. Slight difference. So that's what? GREN IPsec. That's lab number four.